Welcome to this week's edition of Outdoors Online, the weekly webcast produced by the North Dakota Game and Fish Department. I'm your host, Mike Anderson. My guest this week is Fisheries Supervisor Jerry Weigel. Jerry, you're in charge of the fish stocking program in North Dakota. How long has the Game and Fish Department been stocking fish? Well, our records go back to the early 1900s, uh, and back then we just uh, had the capability of throwing out a few uh, walleye fry, and, and in the most cases we didn't have a lot of the reservoirs that we have today, so it was a handful of our natural lakes like up in the Turtle Mountains or Spearwood Lake and lakes like that. Okay, how many lakes are we stocking this year? This year we will have stocked 280 lakes. Uh, we're looking to ship about 16 million fish totaling 70,000 pounds and to put that in perspective in the late 80s when we had just as many as much hatchery uh, production capability we were only stocking 150 lakes. So a lot more lakes and a lot more fish. Uh, it's just there's uh, a lot more uh, water to work with which um, you know makes our job easy you know we just have to put the fish in there and uh, and things really were, are working out well. How many walleyes? fingerlings are we stocking? Uh, this year that that is actually up by about 30 uh, lakes we're up to a hundred and over 180 lakes we're gonna be stocking uh, and we're shooting for around 11 million where we actually have uh, some excess fish so we're gonna be really close close to breaking a record of 12 million fingerlings. And you mentioned before we started this that Lake Sakakawea didn't take any walleye fingerlings this year. Right you know the bigger systems you know they're a lot more intensively managed and based on what's going on uh, they determined that they wouldn't need any fingerling stocking this year which uh, gave us a great opportunity to shift that large stocking production to uh, other smaller lakes across the state and it couldn't have came at a better time when you uh, consider all the water that came last fall and through the winter and with uh, so many of our lakes being at record highs we're able to really take advantage of all that flooded vegetation and food and opportunity out there. Explain how is it possible to provide opportunities in so many different lakes for walleyes? Well, uh, it really relates to the kind of production capability that, that I think is almost unprecedented when it comes to walleye as far as out of the Garrison Dam National Fish Hatchery. Uh, this past uh, few weeks ago when we were at the peak of our shipping, over a seven day period we stocked 150 lakes with just about 8 million fish driving 8,000 miles and you just don't have that ability to stock that many waters when you're trying to do it at the most optimal time to get the best success unless you have incredible hatchery production like we get out of our national fish hatcheries here in North Dakota. Okay and you stock these walleye fingerlings in what two three years they're catchable? Uh, you know we used to say uh, four years to a one pound fish um, as over the years we've learned that especially from the interstate and south in these natural lakes which are a lot more productive lots of food that they're getting there for sure in three years and we actually have a handful that occasionally will be less than three years two two and a half years you're getting a one pound fish which is just amazing growth for this far north okay walleye is obviously the most popular fish in north dakota for people to catch but we stock many others Right, uh, you know we do our traditional about 40 trout lakes around the state. Uh, a lot of those are geared towards uh, community ponds and things to provide some uh, local community fisheries. Uh, we do salmon in Lake Sakakawee every year. Uh, we have about 40, 50 northern pike lakes that again are generally a little too shallow for walleyes and they're kind of uh, dedicated pike lakes and they uh, suffer winter kill and they're just uh, they need a little help more often than the walleye lake so that's we have some northern pike that go there and then we also do a small amount of largemouth bass um, we probably do the fewest species now because we're committing our production to walleyes and you only can do you know a crop or two of fish in a hatchery pond and when, a, when you stock with walleyes it takes away your ability to do other species but we're doing walleyes because that's what we hear our uh, constituents want the most and we're fortunate that we can do them really well. Okay, a big part of the success for this fish stocking program is the partnership with the two national fish hatcheries in North Dakota. This goes back to some of the very first hatcheries being built in the state, uh, the Valley City National Fish Hatchery at Valley City, the Garrison Dam National Fish Hatchery up in Riverdale. 
Um, and for all of these years, even uh, from their beginning, the department was the one that would go out and collect the eggs, provide it to the hatchery. The hatchery was staffed up to just do the rearing. And then the state came back, the department came back and uh, would take the fish and transport them to the lakes. And so we're able to do this uh, with minimal investment on the department's side and likewise with the Fish and Wildlife when you don't have to have that redundancy of uh, having staff to collect eggs and, and transport fish and, and so we're able to raise fish as economically and cheap as possible in the country. Okay, it's probably fair to say it's the best fishing we've ever seen in North Dakota. Give some simple tips if somebody's never been fishing and, and this year we've sold record number of fishing licenses also. Right, and you know the record license sales I think is kind of uh, you know anecdotally related to uh, folks trying to properly respond to COVID and be safe in that fishing is kind of a COVID friendly activity in that it's a small group, you're generally isolated. The other thing that relates to fishing uh, like I mentioned earlier is we used to historically manage 150 lakes. We're up over 400 lakes so the opportunity across the state is amazing. Other fishing things, uh, you know folks should keep in mind we've got uh, a handful of uh, community ponds spread throughout the state at almost any of our major cities. Uh, these ponds are stocked with trout annually. We also have perch, bluegill, catfish in them. Um, just this weekend for example I took my uh, my niece is out to a pond here in Bismarck, right in town, and just with some simple cane poles and some uh, angle worms, they were catching their first fish, and then you get them hooked. I mean, that's the trick, is to get them out, get them fishing, and uh, get them some activity, and it's fun. So you don't need that big fancy boat. You can fish from shore, go to some right. of these urban fisheries. Urban fisheries, and the other thing, as far as those that don't maybe don't have a community fishery, we must have uh, 15, 20 fishing piers installed throughout the state at a lot of our better lakes. All this is on our website and these fishing piers give you a chance to get out out past the weeds and again fish off of a nice dock where you don't have to stomp around in the mud uh, creating a nice safe uh, environment to be fishing. If you're under 16 fishing you don't need a license in North Dakota. Right. Absolutely and that's the that's really the the thing we uh, can't stress enough is it, it, there's nothing more fun than watching fish ca uh, kids catch their first fish. And if you're 16 and older, it's easy to get a fishing license. Absolutely. Everything's online. You don't have to go to no office. You don't have to worry about anything. You just uh, purchase it online, have it on your phone, and you are golden. A lot of great information, Jerry. Thank you. You bet. For more information on what lakes were stocked in North Dakota this year, visit the Game and Fish Department's website at gf.nd. Gov. For Fisheries Supervisor Jerry Weigel and the rest of the staff here at the Game and Fish Department, thanks for joining us for this week's Outdoors Online. We'll see you again next week.